Well, it's about quarter to seven here at the Oxwagon camp. Um, the sun's gonna be up in about 15 minutes. So we're just gonna down some coffee and then we're gonna head out in that general direction. And the plan is that we wanna be in a good vantage point um, when the sun hits the tops of the trees because it's cold this morning and the monkeys are gonna be straight up the trees to, to sun themselves. And that's when we're gonna spot them and get them. And that's how you deal with the rock pigeon problem. Rock pigeons are actually natural in this area. When they cause damage like this and poop all over the place, they get a 40 grain javelin to the chest area and you saw the result. <laughs> We head out up a river valley, keeping a sharp eye out for monkeys. And although we do spot a troop early on, getting a clear shot is a different challenge altogether. I think those monkeys just outsmarted us. We saw a few of them just duck in here under one of the trees. Thought we'd go after them on foot. But yeah, on foot trying to sneak into a monkey, there's no ways that I, I, would, I would beat them in that, that sort of competition. <laughs> so I think we need to wait until the sun hits these trees and then we can see them from further away. Maybe get a longer shot of the 22 250 or the 260. The skies are now jet blue and the sun beginning to hit the valley floor. Although we haven't managed to get anything down yet, we're pretty confident that that will change shortly as we pull up to a cliffside and bring out the Panthera in the hope to ambush a Dassey on the rocks. This setup had proven itself in the Bovians cliff as an awesome tool for Dassey hunting and as we glass for movement ahead, we know that it's very capable of doing the job, even from around 100 yards and beyond. Well, we've come out to a, um, a Dassey spot here, just a a whole cliffside that runs along the river. We're sitting about a hundred meters away. Um, I've set up with the Panthera because this gun on this tripod gives us a nice stable shooting position, but it's still quite early in the morning. The sun hasn't hit the rocks yet. So we're not expecting anything to come out very quickly, but either way, we're gonna sit in glass and hopefully we can get a chance. We do eventually spot a Dassey on the cliff very well camouflaged against the rocks and the Element Ballistics app provides a firing solution. Let's get on him there nicely. Dead. <laughs> First Dassey with the Panthera, guys. Actually, no, it's not. Geez, we shot a lot of them during our last Bavion's trip. First does you with the Pantera on this property. 95 yards, um, yeah, down to 2.1 mils. Put the crosses on his head and dropped him on the spot. Um, it's those first round hits that matter. Um, someone commented on my channel the other day and, and said, hey, why am I not using, like, you know, why are we still using 30 cal pellets for bench? Um, and I kind of said, well, it's a little bit different because you've got sighted targets. It doesn't matter that much if you've got a lot of wind drift as long as you can, as long as it's predictable. First round hits here is the only thing that matter. You don't get a sighted target. So you've got a dial and you've got to shoot. Thankfully, there's no wind right now. So I didn't have to hold for wind. I just had to check my, check my levels, dial to elevation, hold still and, and pull the trigger. And this gun with those, just those two little baffles on the end, is surprisingly quiet like there's really no need for adding a longer silencer which is actually pretty insane but great to get that one down with big areas of cliffside on display in this particular valley and the potential for dicey to show up on any of them we spend a good amount of time in silence just glassing around but with the day growing older by the minute we eventually decide to move on to more important things and i'm glad we did because just around the corner, our old friend, the Grey Menace, the Vervet Monkeys, just begging for lead.
we, what we're doing is we're arranging these uh, fence poles here where we expect them to cross and then you know if they go a bit further we've got to ho I've got to hold over if they come a bit closer I've got to hold under but yeah I'd range it 105 meters something like that so 1.9 mils or 105 yards rather 1.9 mils he was obviously slightly further maybe 110 but got him on that second shot for sure While filling the impact magazine, we spot more monkeys just out of air gun range and out comes the 260 yeah, Remington right for a shot at 165 meters. A chip shot for a 95 grand VMAX traveling at over 3,400 feet per second. Got him. I'm not super steady here, but I got him, 165 meters, now hopefully, hopefully I got him on, on scope cam. We wait a little while longer, just in case we spot more monkeys. We do eventually spot another one, and I set up on a tripod topped with a sandbag. Okay, see him. Can't tell. Can't tell. There's still, I'd say, slightly more recoil than I'd want from from this gun um, shooting a 95 grand VMAX. So I was showing everyone yesterday. This is the 22 to 50 with a 50 grand VMAX. Very very low recoiling for. Scope cam stuff like this, um, it's awesome. And that little bit of extra weight, that makes it really hard to control the, the recoil enough to actually watch your shot all the way to the animal, unfortunately. But yeah, I didn't sound like I hit him, but it's very possible that I did. It's, it's as I said, it's very hard to tell. We have to just check the footage in slow-mo. Time to go retrieve the casualties and assess the damage. Right, so this is our furthest monkey. This was the one that was at about 110 yards. Um, first shot looked like it was slightly low. See lots of blood around his head and neck. So yeah, I ended up putting him down right here at the fence where we shot him. This grass here is very long. So it's, it's kind of hard to, to tell what, where they might have landed. But there you go. I see a tail there right here. So here's the other one. So need to figure out how to get him out. <laughs> yeah, here's the second one. Um, looks like in the one sort of shoulder and out the other shoulder. So that would have put him down pretty, pretty well also. Both of them landed exactly where we shot them. So um, it's always good to be able to recover them. Fantastic. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think we've got, I think we've got more monkeys in these first like less than 24 hours than we got on our whole previous trip here, which is crazy. So yeah, it's been very fruitful so far. I'm keeping a constant eye up there because I know that the rest of the monkeys are somewhere on this hillside hiding in the bushes. But yeah, as long as they keep their heads down, we're never gonna see them. Yep, clapped him. Yeah, this was a big one as well. Very big, okay. Oh my word, this is a massive monkey. Yeah, this is the this is the main peanut right over here. This thing is it might be it might actually be the biggest monkey I've ever seen in my life. And as you can see by the blue nuts, that's a male. But uh yeah, try not to show too much blood, but he's uh he's absolutely shredded there on his chest. That's more or less where, where I was aiming. I wasn't sure if I got my distance wrong or whether there'd be some you know bounce from my shooting position, so I held sort of uh, on his chest area, if it went high, it would go ahead. If it went low, it would go lower chest. And yeah, absolutely put him down on the spot. So first kill with the 95 grand VMAXs, aside from those baboons at, in the Bobby Arnskloof. Awesome. Jeez, that's a big monkey. My goodness. Ugh. This is the scene that you always want to see halfway through the morning. 
a good haul of monkeys being dragged back to the truck. You're never really guaranteed to get monkeys here. They are very smart animals that can easily evade hunters. And we've come out on top in this morning's exchange. Much of our success over the last few Oxwagon Diary seasons has come from the cultivated lands of the farm next door. During the drier parts of the year, when there is less natural food available for the monkeys to forage, they make their way down to these fields and raid the crops. Much of this land is grass and lucerne, grazing areas for cows and sheep, but in between lie a few cornfields and the monkeys and baboons can do some proper damage here if not kept under control. While driving past one of these fields, we spot a few baboons running out from between the corn and up a mountain. One stops momentarily on a rock and I rush the shot, just missing to the right. I reload and manage to take this one on the run. Not a perfect shot, but with a 95 grand VMAX at blitzing speeds, he doesn't last long at all and topples over about 100 yards from where he was hit. Wow, that happened quickly. Baboons, 270 yards away. Um, yeah, they started running up the hill the moment we stopped. Um, first one I took a shot at, I missed. It's not a very stable position here. I had to like lift this bag up a bit to, to get stable. And then the second one, uh, I had to shoot on the run. And I think I, I, well, I definitely got a piece of him because I saw him running away with a big hole in his side. So he, he went down just behind a tree there. It's a bit too far for us to go and retrieve him. But um, yeah, good to get a baboon down. Awesome stuff. I spot another monkey trying to run away after raiding a cornfield and I just hesitate a little bit too long on this one. Well the wind suddenly picked up like crazy. You won't hear it because I've got my fluffy mic on but you can see my wind indicator here. Uh, it's pumping. We switched the 22 to 50 because the 260 from a scope cam footage perspective just wasn't, it was just moving a bit too much to actually see the bullet hit the animal. Um, and we almost got a really cool opportunity here. We, we drove past, we saw some monkeys on a, sitting on a, well, in this, in this field over here, eating from the field. And uh, pulled off, I climbed up this hill, I plonked a sandbag on the, on, the, on the pole here. And as I was just getting focused on the monkeys, they were sitting on a fence pole and then they saw me and ran. I mean, they're so used to being shot at here. So, yeah, we just took a bit too long. That's just the way things go. But hopefully we can get another chance. Just up the road, at the bottom of a valley, we come across a group of warthogs running between the bushes. Being in a position that's very hard to access by vehicle, we decide to leave these alone. I keep hallucinating and seeing little monkey faces everywhere. Uh -oh. Back in the hilly country now, we keep an eye out for monkey faces in the bushes, and it's not long until we're back in business. smoked him. <laughs> Guessing that's 85 meters or 70, 75 meters, it's very close. Um, I hope I was focused on the scope cam. Forgot how much I, I missed this. Thought that 260 could maybe replace it, but nope, I definitely like this gun more for stuff like this. That thing was sitting right below a tree there. Um, yeah, managed to put him down to the 22 to 50. So finally we're getting some action with this rifle. Wasn't actually planning to, this was supposed to be my backup gun. But yeah, it's good to, good to see it not just sitting in the safe all year and getting no action. Uh, it's being put to good use today. Oh, he dead. Another male. Another pretty big male. See where I hit him, yeah? Yeah, took out, took out basically this whole left shoulder of his. I won't show that too much on camera, but there you go. Big male monkey, 22 to 50, doing the business. We've actually got an animal with each of our guns, if you think about it. We've got 
monkeys with the impact we got monkeys with the 260 monkeys with the 22 250 and a dusty with the panthera so i think it's still only 11 o'clock or something so in one morning we've done all of that which is awesome but yeah good to get this one down and uh, i know there's some more in this area so let's keep an eye out on the way out one of the hardest parts is actually finding the monkeys because in the scope cam footage it's like okay well he's in a thorn bush but you know what that's a thorn bush that's a thorn bush that's a thorn bush everything's a thorn bush which means that sometimes it takes like five or ten minutes to actually find the monkeys that you just shot but i'm pretty confident that i smashed that one so he should be around here somewhere once again, we spot movement while loading up a magazine, and this one gets absolutely hammered with a 50 gun V Max at 3,800 feet on. per second. There's basically nothing left of his head. Yeah, I give up on this. I mean, checked a lot of these bushes, can't find any monkeys. Could be sitting right on top, stuck in the in, in the actual bush, in which case we just won't see him. So I think let's give the hunting a bit of a pause for now let's go make some lunch somewhere and we'll take it from there we make our way further up the valley and we're in luck once again as we spot ground squirrels poking out their holes a little way off and we're able to pull out the air gun again this one disappears down his hole and i miss my opportunity but another two show up on a different mound and I'm able to make yeah, a 40 yeah. grand javelin find its mark. There are so many ground squirrels here, it's, this is insane. I got one in there at 118, meet, 118 yards, 2.6 uh, mils. We should go take a look. Well, nothing like a, an opportunistic uh, ground squirrel to cap off a really good morning of shooting. Um, we were just on our way to get lunch and spotted probably five or six ground squirrels out the window. And I actually wanted to keep some of these for, um, you know, we wanted to come out a bit later with the Panthera on a tripod, sit down, take it slow and take a few out like that. But I just couldn't resist. This one uh, saw three of them actually run to this mound here at 100 and 118 yards. And this one sat up nicely for me, took the shot and yeah, managed to put him down on the spot. So really happy with that. So another ground squirrel down. You can see how these animals just completely flatten uh, all this grass over here in this area. So yeah, it's very cool to get one down. Okay, so the plan is now, we're gonna go, like, remember that spot? Yeah, like all the way up the, pass and then down we'll again right. yeah we'll, and we'll pop that up in the awning make some bottom rolls should be good we have a lovely spot in mind for lunch but on the way we find ourselves a little bit distracted by the sight of a few dassies sunning themselves on the rocks the pantera comes out again and i get a chance to set up for a shot on the trial pod Three point three mils is the elevation that I'm getting. I'm just trying to figure out what to do about the wind because it's. I'm gonna wait till it's calming down a bit. Like right now, there's a bit of a lull. <sighs> oh, man, just missed there. I don't know why, but there's some more up there. There's more. Yeah, now the wind's picking up. I don't, I'm gonna hold half a mil. Mm -mm. Uh, I think we just got outsmarted by the wind there. Took two shots, heard both of them ricochet off the rocks. The wind picked up as I started shooting there, like it's probably six or seven miles per hour now, but through this valley, it's very hard to tell what it's actually doing. Is it 
There you go. That is our lunch. Burvos. And we're going to have some Burvos rolls. Um, I'm very, very hungry. These lunch stops out in the bush have become a regular thing since we kitted out our bucky a few years ago. And it's awesome to be able to kind of make our own shade, keep food in a fridge, and to have a little touch of convenience and comfort while still being able to enjoy the magnificent scenery around us. Well, we may be heading into winter with the nights getting really cold, but uh, in the middle of the day, it's still cooking. So being able to come out here to a nice quiet spot, put the awning out to get some shade, park off by river, we can soak our feet in the cold water and make some lunch is exactly what we need to kind of just get away from the action of hunting and just chill for a bit. Being out on the farm with so much topography, you've got these high mountains where it's more like open, exposed, uh, extreme and then down here in the in the valleys you, you get this peaceful you know shade the sound of running water all of that so we want to make the most of that um, we might even come camp here one night but for now just enjoying some lunch and I'm sure we'll get back at it pretty soon wasn't a great shot. Um, I think he was a bit further than I thought he was. I was at 1.1 mils which was about 90 meters but I think he ran probably closer to 100. But he's down just thankfully 40 grand javelin does a lot of damage. Yeah we should go check him out if we can. From up there everything looks very different so the small thorn tree there and this bigger bush here look like they're basically at exactly the same distance from up there. You know, sometimes when ranging a bird in the grass, it's kind of hard to get an exact reading of where they are. There he is. One dead guinea fowl. It's actually a beautiful bird, if you look at them closely. Very, very colorful. Very pretty bird. And it's a game bird. Um, very tasty. Some people argue it's not, but if you are someone who has grown up very little money and can't afford to buy meat you'll be very grateful to get one of these so we're going to hand these over to the farm workers and i'm sure they'll I'm sure they'll cook it up and and make a delicious meal out of it so it will not go to waste there he is perfect specimen of a guinea fowl this is a helmeted guinea fowl you can see it's got that like mohawk slash helmet it's like a hard bone on top of its head very colorful bird I think the feathers are pretty beautiful as well, and this one's in perfect condition, so you'll make a good meal for someone. Well, it's turned out to be a wonderful evening here at the camp. There's kind of ominous signs that uh, we're going to have some rough weather coming over the next couple of days. But for now, a bit of uh, dark skies won't harm us. We've got Anton Senior and Anton Junior coming over later. Not sure if they'll stay for dinner or not, but um, yeah, Anton's gonna be joining us uh, for the next couple of days hunting, which is great because yeah, we get to hang out again after a long time. And he's also got a lot of, um, he knows a lot of spots that we might not know and has connection, have connections to neighboring farms. So it'll be good to see them tonight, but for now, just had a bit of a nap in the ox wagons to, to kind of cool off a bit. It's been a long, busy day. Got a lot of action today. Uh, but I think it's time to make some coffee. Maybe get the fire going. Get some views of this magnificent sunset, which I think is going to be pretty 
uh, pretty pretty tonight. <laughs> and um, let's just wind down and circle it all in once again. Well, this is going to be a good one. We've got uh, two rather large stakes here. The bigger one is labeled a man size steak, so I guess that one's going to be mine. But we've uh, spiced them a few hours ago. Mmm, hear that sizzle. Mmm, a few minutes and these babies will be done and we can go inside and enjoy them. have this champagne I think it's only right that we say a toast to the 40 videos that Matthew's made at the Oxwagon camp. 41 now. 41 videos so <laughs> congratulations Matthew you put so much work into all these videos and, and I've you. personally loved watching them so here's to you. Cheers. Once more we spend the night in these old ox wagons beneath a much older sky full of stars and dream about what tomorrow's hunting might bring. In the next episode, we'll be heading out once again with Anton and spending an epic day in the valleys and mountains of Atmoskloof, shooting monkeys and dassies, and even getting some big animals down when the opportunity arises. Make sure you subscribed, and we'll see you then. Bye.